Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here today. Today I have a new background, but this is basically like a corner that I have. I think my original background is a little bit... Hopefully, I'm holding the mic, so hopefully it's not like scratchy on it. I try not to touch the mic, but... but I created this new background it's just so that it looks more simplified, less things to distract yourself. I'm like at the corner in my room, so hopefully the sunlight and the natural light is good to go. Yeah, so today I want to talk about how to find your first internship during your college years. Whether you are a sophomore, whether you are a freshman or sophomore or junior, you're always finding an internship. If you're not finding a full-time work, you're finding an internship. But before I dive into how to find your first internship, if you're currently a student and you're trying to start your first credit card, I would highly suggest going to Discover to apply for the Discover student credit card. This is because as an international student, I my first credit card is actually through Discover and there's no annual fee. There sometimes are awards here and there, it's very easy to manage. Their helpline is actually very active. It was really helpful for me. There's no minimum credit score that you need to apply. So international student or just like new, if you're new to credit score and you want to start building your credit score, the Discover student card would be a great choice for you to do. I wanted to say that this video is not sponsored by Discover. Discover at all but I think they should but this is just my little shout out for the Discover student credit card. They also have very fun designs like the New York City skyline, like a dog design, other colors. Personally I got the cat design because obviously I'm a cat person. But yeah, so if you're interested in starting your first credit card, use the referral link down below in the description and apply for your first credit card. Now let's jump right back into the video. So I want to talk about finding your first internship as a college student today. And first topic is just a little bit of introduction. I want to share my internship experience with you. I'm going to link my internship experience at Seattle, a video that, a video that I've done before for my technical program management intern for Microsoft in this video. So if you're interested and want to learn more, you can go ahead and watch that video. Here I'm just gonna briefly talk about my internship experience. I will say my all my three years I have internship experience. The first one I had a WordPress web development internship. Second one I have a software engineer internship and then the most recent one is the technical program management internship. I think through my internship I really learned a lot on um, whether it is a soft skills or a hard skills when I'm doing software but when I'm doing technical program management specifically I learned a lot of hard skills I had first experience on what is imposter syndrome and that was not great you know in a workplace like that you will have a lot of mentors a lot of peers to support you so for me it's a learning curve it's a le definitely a learning experience for me as well so I want to talk about the importance of having internships in general it shows that a lot of times internships can lead to a full-time role so a lot of people got internships got a return offer whether it is an internship or a full-time role like me i had internship at microsoft this past summer and i actually got a return offer for a full-time role so that kind of secure my post-grad plans if you're unlucky you have something to list on your resume as experience and to go through the ats system more easily if you're looking for a full-time job people want to see someone that has internship experience beforehand so they know that you know, you're willing to learn, you're open to learning. And so internship experience just add on to your resume and it looks good on your resume. And the second part of this, I want to talk about how to prepare for internship search. So I've made a lot of posts on LinkedIn on how to start searching for internships. I think the first thing is definitely building a strong resume. For my school, we use this VMOG as a system where we can put in a resume, they put out a score for us, and then we can kind of look through their feedbacks and improve upon their feedbacks. It's kind of like a screening through ATS system. So if you if your school also uses Vima, it will be a very good software for you to you know go through a resume, see what can be improved and whatnot. Sometimes you also like to write cover letters. Personally speaking, I don't write any cover letters. So for me, I don't write them, but other people who might be looking for a full-time job would write them and they would say like it's helpful i just don't have the time and bandwidth to do that so i personally don't do it but if you want to you know go ahead and you should definitely write a couple of letters if you can 
And then third part, I want to talk about some of the potential internship opportunity. Not for me, but you know, researching and where to research. A lot of the times, online job board is definitely a place to go. I personally like to use a GitHub page that have all the software job, all the TPM job. I also like to use job posts where I also talked about it on my LinkedIn post. You can filter through years and they have internships and full time as well. But other than that, I will also go on their corporate website for specific companies that I want to apply for. Then I'll apply through their corporate website instead. Other than that, you can also network with your alumni trying to get a referral from an opening position. I actually got my internship at Microsoft with a referral, so I definitely, I like firmly believe that referral increases your chance of getting into a company. And then fourth, I want to talk about creating online presence. So optimizing your online presence is also really important for building your personal brand guide. I personally like to update my LinkedIn whenever I have to. I like to post things on LinkedIn as well as just interacting with other people's posts on LinkedIn. I just follow a lot of creators on LinkedIn so that I can get like the most updated news or I connect with recruiters to see if they have sometimes recruiters will also post about jobs or internships opportunity as well. One other thing that I would do is also creating my own personal website to show my skills. And if you're looking for into doing software development, I will also start a GitHub pages to just put all my coding skills, my projects. You know, it shows that you know how to learn Git, you know how to collaborate with people on the coding, you know, in the context of coding. And next, I want to talk about preparing for interviews. Now that you've gone through applying stages and you've got like an interview schedule or two, you want to start practicing. I personally like to do mock interviews, which I look up for common interview questions. I have friends to ask them to me, and then I would do like a mock interview with them. Personally, I like to use the star method, which I've also talked about how I cracked a PM interview for Microsoft and another video. So I will also link that video right here. So yeah, like I like to use the star method so I don't ramble. I keep my answers clear and concise and precise and make sure that I answer the questions. If the question is asking me how I use the soft skills to solve a problem, then I'll focus my answer on my soft skills of like problem solving and communications, but nothing else. I can have something here and there, but I wouldn't be rambling a lot and go in depth into too much unless they answer it after as a follow up questions. You know, after you prepare, of course, you want to nail your interviews. So first thing is definitely dress appropriately. I wouldn't say a t-shirt is good. Some people like to wear suits and tie, but personally, I think anything that's professional, like, you know, a collar shirt or something more dressy, not a t-shirt. I personally don't go for dressing up in suits and have a tie or anything like that. I think those are just a little bit too much. And then, of course, you also want to express your interests, be as enthusiastic as you can. I've talked about how I am very enthusiastic in interviews in my PM interview video. So if you're interested, I'll also link it here. And then after that, I wanna talk about, you know, some of the follow-ups after the interview. I personally like to send thank you email and also connect with them on LinkedIn. So that in their sense, you know, I am, expressing my interest to them as well as their company so for them it's kind of like a bonus point like a plus because not a lot of people do it i don't know the percentage of how many people actually do it but i think if you actually do it it will give you a little bit bonus point but i wouldn't say like guarantees you the job i also i would put a few screenshots up right here to show you how I write my thank you email and you can kind of reference to it or if you want more tips on how to write thank you email or anything like that, drop in the comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them. You know, obviously after the interviews, you might have rejection or acceptance, but whenever you get rejections, I would just say don't get frustrated. You know, stay positive. Things are gonna come your way eventually. You should handle your rejection positively positively and if possible you can also email them to see if they are able to give you any feedback some company are too busy to give feedbacks but some smaller ones will definitely give you feedbacks on how you can improve what's what went wrong what went well things like that and yeah and like those are just learning opportunity it is a practice interview for you you might also get acceptance for an offer 
And so in that case, usually for internships, I don't negotiate my salary. But for full time, I highly encourage you to uh, to negotiate your salary, your benefits. If you want to do remote, ask for if there's any remote eligibility or if you want more than what they're offering you on a salary context. And try to defend your case on why you should why you should get more and what can they benefit from you if you know they pay you more. And last but not least, I just want to conclude some key takeaways on what you should take away from this video. Definitely, first internship is definitely mass applying. I've applied to like 300 jobs and I got one offer, which is pretty good as a sophomore. So I would just say mass applying, don't get discouraged. I honestly highly encourage you to stay positive and you know, I know it's I know it's very easy to fall into the hole of just being so frustrated and wanting to give up during your job search. You get your first one, the second is gonna come, the third is gonna come. So you only need that one yes and a little bit of courage to either reach out to someone on LinkedIn, reach out to someone that's in your network, your alumni, your peers, get a referral, anything like that. Anything would help you build your online presence would help you to find a job. But other than that, like, those are all the tips that I have for you and for today's video. I hope my video helped you guys to go out and apply for more job, more internships opportunity. If you want more of my video, remember to subscribe and click the bell button so you get a notification whenever I post. I'll be posting probably every week. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and good luck on your job search. Bye.